Hi everyone and welcome to Smart Alex Coaching. In this video, we're going to be looking at how to find the highest common factor of a set of numbers using its prime factorization. Suppose we would like to find the highest common factor or HCF of 84 and 378. One method is to list out all the factors of 84 and 378. We then can go through the list and look for the common factors and the highest number in this list becomes our highest common factor. So in this list, our common factors are 1, 2, 3, 6, 7, 14, 21, and 42. And since 42 is the highest number, it becomes the highest common factor or HCF of 84 and 378. However, this method can get quite lengthy, especially for us to list out all the factors of numbers that are large. So a more efficient way is to find the HCF using prime factorization. We can use factor trees to help us find the prime factorization of numbers. 84 is equal to 2 times 42, 42 is equal to 6 times 7, and 6 is equal to 2 times 3. So 84 is equal to 2 times 2 times 3 times 7, 378 is equal to 2 times 189, 189 is equal to 9 times 21, 9 is equal to 3 times 3, and 21 is equal to 3 times 7. So 378 is equal to 2 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 7. In order for us to find the HCF of 84 and 378, we're going to collect all the like factors. So we're going to take 2, 3, and 7. This means that the HCF of 84 and 378 is going to be given by 2 times 3 times 7, which is equal to 42. Another method is to directly use its prime factorization written in index form. 84 is equal to 2 squared times 3 times 7. 378 is equal to 2 times 3 cubed times 7. Now the rule is we identify the common prime factors. In this case, the common prime factors are 2, 3, and 7. And what we're going to do is we're going to select the prime factor with the lowest power. So here we've got 2 squared and 2. 2 has got the lowest power. So we're going to select this two, then three and three cubed. You can see that three has got the lowest power and then seven and seven, they're both the same. So we're going to take one seven. So that means that our HCF of 84 and 378 is going to be given by two times three times seven, which again is equal to 42. So here are some more examples on how to apply the rule to find the HCF given the prime factorization written in index form. The first set of numbers, we've got 90 and 1890. We're first going to identify the common prime factors, which are 2, 3, and 5. We then go through and select the one with the lowest power. So for 2, both have got the power of 1, so it doesn't matter which one we select. So I'm just going to select 1, 2. 3 squared and 3 cubed. 3 squared has got the lowest power, so we're going to select 3 squared and 5 and 5. They both have the same power of 1, so I'm just going to select 1. Therefore, the HCF of 90 and 1890 is going to be 2 times 3 squared times 5, which is equal to 90. The next set of numbers, we've got 420 and 3960. Again, we're going to identify the common prime factors, which are 2, 3, and 5. 7 and 11 are not common in both, so we don't take them. And once we identify the common prime factors, we're then going to choose the one with the lowest power. So 2 squared and 2 cubed. 2 squared has got the lower power, 3 and 3 squared, 3 has got the lower power, and 5 are both of the same power of degree 1, so I'm just going to choose 1. And combining that together, we're going to get the HCF of 420 and 3960 to be 
2 squared times 3 times 5, which is equal to 60. We can also use this method to find the HCF of a set of three or more numbers as well. So in the last set, I've got 45, 60, 120. We're going to go through the list and identify the common prime factors. In this case, happens to be three and five only. And from then, we're going to choose the one with the lowest power from each prime factor. So three is the lowest one and five as well. And so our HCF of the set of these three numbers, 45, 60, and 120, is given by 3 times 5, or simply 15. Thank you so much for watching this video. We hope that you did learn something from it. If you have any suggestions, please feel free to comment below and don't forget to subscribe. In our next video, we're going to be looking at how to find the lowest common multiple given prime factorizations. Until then, enjoy maths. We'll see you next time. Bye for now.